I'm Michael Saunders. I'm the CEO of Captain Labs. We're building the future of commerce on Solana. So why am I uh, qualified to talk to you about disrupting marketplaces? Uh, I started one of the earliest marketplaces, online marketplaces, for food delivery back in 1997. Uh, I got busy signals and messed up tuna hoagie in ordering a sandwich while I was at college and started CampusFood.com. Uh, we found our earliest customers, the early adopters were in colleges, high-speed internet was only at colleges at the time, and ended up scaling it to about 300 universities around the country. So as more folks uh, got on the internet, we, we grew and grew and grew, and ultimately got acquired by Grubhub, and uh, I joined as a senior executive at Grubhub, and really watched the space evolve as more folks got on the internet. Uh, ultimately, we IPO'd in 2014, and I left at the end of 2015. As I left, I, I realized how centralization forces really impacted marketplaces, and we all got greedy. We, we went from charging 5% for transaction fees, we were solving real problems for discovery, we were solving real problems uh, for payment, but at the end of the day, we made the decision, or all of the marketplaces really made decisions that then that the customers were owned by them and, and not by the, the merchants themselves. While we were solving problems for merchants like, like marketing and, and email, email marketing and social media, at, at the end of the day, we were really wholesalers providing, providing value uh, for ourselves as opposed, to these uh, as opposed to these restaurants. And so now you'll see ordering is like 30% more expensive than if you just go in in person. So this isn't unique to food delivery. This is really all marketplaces, right? You'll see this with, with Airbnb. You'll see this with, uh, with the hotel. You'll see this with, uh, with ticketing. And really, when blockchain first came out, it really felt like a do-over. It felt like this is an opportunity to really try to rebuild this again, but a better way, right? So when I first found Solana, I was like, oh, this is it. This is really the first blockchain that really makes sense for all the reasons that I think you guys are all here, right? It really, what does it mean to give data back to the, to the consumer, right? If, if consumers own our data, then that means we can make decisions for ourselves. That means we're not trapped into these, these private moats that allow other folks to extract on our behalf. And really, a, an online marketplace where you own your data gives you choice, right? That composability allows you to say, you know what, I'm gonna move my business somewhere else because, because I'm not being valued for the, the contribution that I'm making as a consumer. Right? The community coordination is inherent to blockchain. It's inherent to the NFT communities we're seeing here. It's the ability to not just say, hey, I'm one customer, but hey, me and my buddies on the internet, we all share the same values and, and can make decisions together. Uh, for me, though, what was missing was really the connection to the real world. Right? We, are, we all live in this, this ecosystem, and, and it's, you know, getting things on chain is fantastic, but once you move to the real world, things really start to fall apart. And so for me, it was really, how do we really bridge the Web3 into the real world? And so uh, I built, we built a protocol. I applied it to, uh, to Grizzlython. We came in first place uh, for, the, uh, for the payments track, and it's called Tamperproof. And what Tamperproof allowed us to do was really uh, embed a key code into an NFT and allow that NFT to be tradable. So only the user can go claim that, that code at the end by opening it up, thereby the rest of the world knowing that it's been seen. So that allowed us to put things like gift cards, put things with codes, like Shopify codes, into an NFT, allow it to be tradable. But really, that was an unlock for us. The unlock was a marketplace where we could really build on. The first, what was obvious for us, was ticketing. Ticketing is basically, uh, these are concert tickets, these, these are... These are sporting events. This is really about, you know, these are digital assets. They're just not on chain. So we built XP. We're coming out of private beta today. We're now publicly launched, xp.xyz. Uh, please check it out. Uh, we have uh, over, we, we actually have over 10 million tickets available as of today. Uh, so that you can go see all your po popular concerts uh, in, the, in the US and Canada. And uh, what we do is we work with a network of brokers to basically bring their ticketing inventory on chain. And then we are that first top, uh, as a, almost a consumer uh, RWA, a real world asset, that allows these things to be tradable. And so by the brokers being able to sell, they, they don't care if they're selling through uh, any, any mar online marketplace, they just want that liquidity, and that's what we're able to provide. 
So XP is, is really built on Web3 Rails, but built for everyday consumers. Right? We accept USDC as, as primary payment, uh, but we also integrate with, with uh, Coinbase Pay, where you can pay with your, your exchange account, or just a traditional credit card. And so you could log in with your phantom wallet, with your backpack wallet. You could also log in with just a phone number, and we'll spin up all on behalf in the background, where the transaction itself is a Metaplex uh, uh, auction house swap, but that's really hidden in the background. And so really, this is just the beginning. Building a Web3 foundation really creates so much opportunity for the user to be in control, right? And so you know, we had a user recently uh, buy tickets to a, a sporting event uh, couldn't go, and then sold it on, on Tensor, right? The composability is all possible with these, with these primitives that, that are forming in commerce. Uh, we believe these tickets ultimately become collectibles. This is a way that you can prove your, your fandom. Really, you can prove, I listen to a lot of Taylor Swift. I listen to a lot of uh, your favorite artist, and I've gone to a lot of their shows, and because of that, I demand value. I demand value from the performer, where it's not them saying I'm in their fan club, we're creating the fan clubs ourselves, and we can get more for, more for our, our money, more for our attention. Uh, so we think the future really is this, this uh, community that's built around this, and this allows the next generation of online marketplaces to take form. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, please check out XP, xp.xyz, thank you. Amazing. Um, does anyone have any questions for Michael about his talk? We have a microphone in the audience in case anyone, anyone has any questions. Hi. Uh, so is there ever some kind of friction between platforms like Ticketmaster where they have contracts or obligations with venues where they don't really want like third parties basically, well, preventing them from getting all those like crap fees? Uh, it's, how do you deal with that? It's, it's, a, it's a real problem. I think when we look at the problem set ourselves, uh, starting with the secondary market made the most sense. There's already a robust $12 billion secondary market for ticket sales. So you know, the end boss is Ticketmaster. right? I, I think we needed to really create that flywheel of consumer demand and ticket inventory. And there are a network of brokers today that are willing to sell tickets at much cheaper prices if they could, could find that demand.